Hey everyone, welcome to this weekend's video update. Today's Friday, December 18th. Let's go over all the trades and alerts for the pro members. But first, let's talk about the markets a little bit. Looking at SPX, hit a new all-time high today. Uh, I mean, this thing just continues to be strong. I've been talking about it really since, uh, well, back here. Uh, we, had, we did have a little flush before the election, but it has just been all up, up, and away since after the election. And of course, the, the news of the vaccine coming out and new stimulus and a lot of other factors just keep pushing this thing up. But what's interesting is you look at the NASDAQ, same thing. I mean, this thing has hit, hit new, hit new all-time highs today. If you look at the Russell, which is small caps, uh, has a lot of banks, a lot of financials. I mean, this thing, obviously, new all-time highs as well. This one, uh, the Russell with very little pullbacks. I mean, this thing has just been grinding, pushing, grinding, pushing, grinding, pushing. And what's interesting, though, is the, the stocks that were driving this market, tech, the so-called FANG stocks, you know, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google. I mean, if you look at Apple, Apple's near all-time highs. It hit a new all-time high yesterday. But look at this, some of these others. Amazon, Amazon's not an all-time high. I mean, it hit it back in October, uh, but it's it's a decent amount below. Uh, if you look at um, uh, some of these others, like Facebook, Facebook's not at all-time highs. Okay, I mean, it hit it back in uh, November. Uh, Microsoft is not at all-time highs. So we have a we have a different crew of stocks really driving this market. I mean, you've got of course uh, Tesla. I mean Tesla just ripped through its all time highs again today after it continues to set new all time highs. I mean you got companies like Twilio hitting new all time highs, uh, Uber a little bit under its all time highs, uh, like Win Casinos all time highs in the midst of a pandemic where you know casinos definitely are not as packed as they were pre pre pandemic. Uh, it's just interesting to see uh, kind of a rotation in in sectors. If we look at like XLF, which is the financial ETF, I mean it's just it's under just under all time highs. So we got a little different bag of stocks driving this market aside from just the Fang stocks, just from just aside from the big big tech stocks. So it'd be interesting to see. I mean I still think that we see some further upside in the short term. Uh, we're certainly not loading up on short delta at this point. We're a little under one to one on a ratio of short delta versus our theta. We've still got some some short delta vertical calls on, but we haven't added any bunkers or anything like that yet. I really want to see a push, a, a really uh, a push, an extension, potentially kind of a blow off top type of a move before I start really loading up on shorts. But we'll still benefit. We, you know, we're still in position to benefit if this market does turn around. Uh, but we continue to book profits with with our other strategies as this thing continues to grind and push higher as well. So uh, interesting stuff. We'll continue to do what we do. I think uh, on our closed trades already this month of December, we're up over thirty five hundred bucks on our core portfolio. And then on our let's move to our day trading before we get into the alerts uh, this week on day trading. Uh, did really well on our mighty 90s alone, booked over twenty nine hundred dollars. And if you guys, I know, you know, some people have to work and cannot, you know, you know, watch the live stream for the day trading. But if you have not been in there, uh, I would highly encourage you to do it. We are, A, we're having a lot of fun and we are just booking profits. I mean, great week for the Mighty 90, like I said, plus 2972. Only did one pairs trade uh, for minus 170. And then the runners actually had a down week in the runners for the first time since October. And uh, small red days every day this week. We didn't trade Friday uh, due to a funeral conflict uh, confliction, but um, I'll afford uh, red days. So for the week, net net uh, over $2,000. And, um, you know, the one thing about the runners, like I said, this is the first red week we've had in the runners since back on October 19th. Uh, and look at last couple and last week was barely green, but look at our winning percentage on the runners has been a little bit low. We got to get that over 50%. I don't focus on win rate because we're cutting losses really quick. But, uh, but, but as you'll notice, if, we've, if we're up to 60% win rate or 55 or over 50, we're usually pretty, pretty green on the runner. So uh, we'll get we'll get back at that. I mean, one one red week is not a big deal. You're going to have those, uh, but our mighty ninety continues to be phenomenal uh, this week. Over uh, right at a seventy five percent win rate, and you'll notice anytime we can be seventy percent or better on the mighty ninety, we're typically pretty green. So, 
Good stuff there. Overall, uh, since basically since September, since the first part of September, we, we've got the last day of October on here as well, but uh, up over $36,000 $36, on our day trade. So continue to do really well there. All right, let's jump into the alerts and take a look. Starting with Monday the 14th, we did a closing trade in Tesla. This was an iron duck that we had in Tesla. Book to beak profit there of 168 bucks. Price ran up. Uh, didn't really have a chance to get back to our duck head, so we just closed that out early and booked beak profit. Next trade was an opening trade in, in uh, Netflix. So we did a weekly double calendar. I got some questions from members here because we usually do these weekly double calendars just in the indices like SPX. Uh, but in this case, Netflix set up well. Uh, did this with the front week of four days to expiration and the back week at 17. So we didn't go to the next weekly. We actually skipped a week and went out based on the uh, implied volatility skew of those different option cycles. Um, so I will, uh, we had a closing trade in that. So we'll get to that here in a minute. Did a rolling adjusting trade in Apple. So this is a long put vertical, one of our short directional plays. Uh, this one we rolled from December out to January just to keep that uh, extend duration, keep that short delta in our portfolio. Let's take a look at Apple. Apple, Apple, Apple. Let me pull this down a little bit. All right, so Apple, so it's right at the break even. So, you know, we could use some downside to benefit that. Obviously, Apple hit a new all time high yesterday. Big rip up on, on, uh, on Tuesday uh, didn't help that position. So, hopefully, we see a little bit of a retracement here to benefit our Apple trade. Uh, next position, opening trade in Baidu. So, we did an iron condor in Baidu. So, why Baidu, you ask? Well, uh, it's got an IV percentile of 72. And what's interesting about Baidu, is this thing has been on a rip roar and rally so it's not too often when you see a stock rallying and implied volatility spiking they just came out with news that they're getting into the electronic vehicle mar electric vehicle market and so wall street likey and uh the stock price just exploded uh, we put the iron condor on this day and it's chopped sideways for a couple days so hopefully we can stay in our range uh, you can see prices hanging out right here. Implied volatility has actually spiked a little bit more since we put this on. So we're down slightly, even though we're in range. Uh, but we'll uh, we'll continue to um, to manage that. We may add another one. I mean, if this thing pushes up to the break even, which would be all the way up here above the uh, above the current highs, above 201, you know, up to this level, uh, we may add another iron condor. Um, so uh, we could look for that. Otherwise, if it stays in range, we'll just wait for 30 to 40 for. 40, 30 to 40 percent of max profit and try to book that uh, while we're here we had another alert today on friday for a weekly double calendar in baidu and so same kind of thing that i mentioned in netflix i mean this thing just had great implied volatility skew and by that i mean the front week had um you know right now it's got it's at 60 versus 55 in the back week so that's a good differential. And so we're taking advantage of that with a weekly double calendar. Now price is hanging out right here. Uh, so for this one, we could use, we have a lot of room to the upside if this thing keeps ripping. And uh, hopefully we see some contraction in the front week versus the back week. And this expires Christmas. So we will be out of this by Christmas Eve at the latest. Uh, so that's the plan in Baidu. Opening trade in Tesla. So we added a weekly double calendar in Tesla as well. Uh, again, same kind of situation. This uh, uh, this implied volatility skews crazy. We've got 117 in the front week and just 99 in the back week. So wanting to take advantage of that. We'll look to do another potential iron duck in here as well to get a little bit of a contraction in implied volatility with this up move. What's interesting is this up move started, implied volatility started rising. Now it's keep ripping higher and now we're getting a contraction. So interesting action versus the price movement and the implied volatility. Uh, if we take a look at our weekly double calendar, the market is closed. No, we are not up $1,600 on this trade. So don't pay attention to that. Uh, you can't pay attention to this when the markets are closed. Uh, but we are um, you know, still well within range here uh, for our weekly double calendar in Tesla. And it just doesn't, it doesn't happen that often when you see this kind of skew. So we want to take advantage of it. And that's why we're getting uh, into these as opposed to just SPX or some of the other indices that we uh, trade a lot of times on these uh, weekly double calendars. 
SPX closing trade. So here's a weekly double calendar that we had in SPX. We went ahead and closed, uh, booked a nice profit on that one of $315. And um, uh, that one just, uh, we, we got out on uh, Thursday. I posted a, a, a short video, uh, just a little bit more details of, of why we got out. Uh, the, we were in the AM options in the front week. And so based on the kind of the risk reward available, I uh, thought it was prudent to close on Thursday, so just book that profit. And then DIA, rolling adjusting trade in DIA. This is one of our short call verticals. Uh, on this one, we went from December and just skipped January and went straight out to February with a little bit more duration. This is one of our short delta plays. So if we take a look at DIA. Oops. Oh, man. Get off. How do I get off here? Done. Okay. Uh, done. DIA. Here we go. So DIA, we've got the short call vertical. Price is pretty close to where we rolled it. Hasn't moved much since then. Just looking for some downside to benefit that trade. Netflix. This is the closing trade of that weekly double calendar. We booked uh, just about $111 on that one. Um, we got close to expiration. I didn't want uh, I didn't want it to take away our profit that we had on the trade, and uh, I had an assumption that price was probably going to move a little bit higher today, and Ivy would contract even more, which would not have been good for the position. So we went ahead and just booked that, and uh, and got out of that trade. So we're in only in it a couple of days. Uh, FedEx. We did an earnings iron duck in FedEx, and. Uh, uh, price came down. Let's take a look at a chart of FedEx. So announced earnings and price came down and just kind of kept bleeding lower and lower and lower and it was right in our duck head. Uh, we did our vertigo strategy class today, so I couldn't hold it any closer to expiration. We closed this out about an hour and a half before the market closed. So didn't book full uh, max duck head. Uh, but pretty pretty darn close. So great trade in FedEx. Booked uh, what did we book on that? Uh, Four hundred sixty eight dollar profit in FedEx. Next trade was an opening trade in Baidu. So that was the weekly double calendar I already showed you. And then in FedEx, that was the closing trade where we booked that booked that profit. And then lastly, uh, we also had an iron duck in Amazon, and we just let that expire. It was way up the beak. I tried a couple couple different days, um, Thursday and Wednesday, to close this out early for beak profit, but just wasn't getting filled. So just held it, let it expire, booked beak profit of $217. So uh, nice, nice little trade there. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of these other positions. We've got a long put vertical in the S&P. Uh, this has moved a little bit out of range here, so we need some downside to get back in. Natty Gas is doing well for us. We're uh, we're up about almost eighteen hundred dollars since we did our last roll, uh, so working our way back nicely to profits. If we can have, if we can get through this cycle without price making a massive move outside of our range, and uh, and we can you know kind of book a profit on our book a credit on our next roll uh, we will be back to profits in natty gas after surviving that massive move that we that we went through uh, a few months ago so very nice in that gas zb bonds uh, price is kind of hanging out here during the in the lower end of the range so we need a little pop up near center in bonds uh, bonds just continue to stay weak and obviously with the market moving up uh, bonds are seeing some weakness this week uh, but hopefully we can get a little bit of a bounce and get back into center there. Apple, I mentioned that one, I believe, right? We've got this, yeah, it's right at the break even. Uh, Amazon, we've got another iron, oh, that's the iron deck. It, it expired, so it's still showing up, but that'll disappear um, here shortly. Baidu, I mentioned. DE, DE has not been our friend. Uh, John Deere continues to, one of those stocks that continues to hit new all-time highs. Uh, I like having short delta in here because we're gonna get a we're gonna get some downside at some point, but uh, it's a little bit out of our range here. But just continue to hold that for part of our short delta in our portfolio. Same with IWM. We've got a long put vertical. This one's out in January, and just looking for some downside to get back into range there. Same with Q's. Uh, that was just just outside of our range. So look, need a little downside to get our January vertical back in. SMH, we've got this short strangle that we've uh, adjusted a few times. Now, price is out of our range, but if we look at just our puts, uh, let me zoom in a little bit more on this. 
You can see we still got a decent amount of premium left in those puts, so I'm not ready to roll those up yet. We're out in January, got a lot of time, so hopefully we get a little downside in SMH and can get back into range there. SPX, we've got a couple of ducks in SPX. Uh, this one is uh, expiring at the end of the month at 12.31. Price is pretty well up the beak here. Uh, not far enough to close early yet, but if it keeps running, uh, we may close that early. Still got a, let's see, let's set our price slice to give you an accurate percentage. Uh, if we put it right on the right on the edge of the beak there, we've still got a 20% chance that price could come back into the duck head. Uh, but like I said, if it holds here, pushes a little higher, we may just close that out early, book that beak profit, and move on, add another one. Uh, and then we've got a shorter duration duck. This one expires 12.22. 12.22, so same thing here. We've got about a 24% chance this could get back to our max profit area. Same thing, if this thing continues a little bit higher, uh, we could uh, book that one early as well. And we'll continue to add some ducks into next week. We'll be looking at ducks in Tesla. We'll be looking at ducks in uh, an indice like SPX. So we'll look for, look for some more of those next week. SPY, we've got an iron condor, pretty well centered here. Uh, about $175 of profit. Uh, would like a little bit more before we do anything with that. I mentioned Tesla. Uh, and then lastly, XLK. So we've got uh, another one of our short delta plays. It's a, a long put vertical. Need some downside to get that back into range. So those are all of our alerts. Those are all of our positions. Uh, next week, we will not be streaming for the day trading for Christmas week. It's not, not the greatest week to be trading. Uh, so we will be offline. Uh, I'm going to try to potentially sneak in a live stream on Wednesday or Thursday. So Wednesday or thir and Thursday, Christmas Eve. Uh, I'm not, it's not hundred percent for sure. I, I will keep you guys posted. I'll post in discord, uh, shoot out an email if that comes to fruition. But, uh, for now on the calendar, we are, we're scheduled to be offline on the streaming all next week, back in action after Christmas. So Everybody have a fantastic holiday. Uh, if I don't talk to you, chat with you, see you, and, uh, and we'll talk to you next week. Cheers.